planet of the fakes global news. King Travis. Many countries are at present formulating regulations that will go a long way to determining who benefits and who loses from any potential benefits that gene editing may have. But in any event, these results provide a compelling case for active government oversight. It is not just regulators who need to step up, however. Investors, insurers, journalists, everyone, in fact, should be asking far more questions of the scientists and companies active in gene editing. Otherwise, boom is likely to stray into bane. Gene guns, tissue culture, and atumafacians are all standard genetic engineering methods for crops. They also all create mutations. That is, they damage DNA. Depending on the specifics of the method used, such as the length of time in tissue culture, the collective result can be 10,000 mutations per genome, Wilson et al., 2006, Latham et al., 2006. For gene editing of crops this means that one on-target mutation may be dwarfed by thousands of off-target ones. The other necessary comparison with GMOs is their track record of being found, long after commercialization, to have unintended foreign DNA present in their genomes. Cornell's virus-resistant papaya, released in Hawaii, turned out to contain at least five, and possibly six, separate F. Fragments of transgenic DNA. Cornell had previously told regulators its papaya contained two transgenes, Ming et al., 2008. Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybean, by then grown on 96% of U.S. soybean acres, was found by independent researchers to have substantially more foreign DNA than Monsanto had claimed. D. Windles et al., 2001. So, if one only listened to the rhetoric contrasting, precise tweaks, of gene editing with messy, random, genetic engineering one would hardly suspect that, when it comes to plants, and often to animals as well, there is little difference between the reality of gene e. Diting and that of genetic engineering. Planet of the Fakes. Like, comment, share, subscribe, comment, follow, then visit. www.